All right, so we have this um, index tree project that we want to do. And this one is, you'll see that I like only give a week for it. This is because it's not a particularly difficult one, but it is an intimidating one. Okay, it does, it can look a bit intimidating because you're like, oh my God, there's all these moving components. And what you're doing is you're essentially making uh, what, what you'll learn is eventually a map where basically you have some key and then you have a value. The key here is the word and the value here is the line that all those, that are all the lines that those words appear on. But one of the first hiccups that we need to get around is how you uh, do your file reading. So let's go ahead and grab this file over here, file reading example. This is a fully functioning file. Um, yeah, this is a fully functioning file. And then we have a text file, which is the complete works of Shakespeare. Um, and, and I have a couple things to say about that one in particular. Um, so first I've got to drag this file Okay, I said I need a, yeah, Windows sometimes does not, it, 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 it has the drag and drop feature, but sometimes it just, just does not want to know or want to play successfully. So, uh, so as we've learned, we want to drag any file we have that we're working with into the SRC folder. So I'm going to drag the file reading from, the file reading from file example.java into here. Um, it had a package declaration, but IntelliJ, what it does, it says, oh, you dragged it into the full into a folder that doesn't need a package declaration. So we went ahead and removed that for you. Right. So don't feel so. And what packages means is that basically I would, if if I wanted to have a package declaration, I just create a new package. Basically, this would look like a new folder inside this file. I could call it index. And then what would happen is I drag it into the index folder. And that just kind of is a way to keep multiple things organized in a, in a single project. So now it says package index. So, and that's because it's inside an index folder right over here now, rather than just being, so it's, so this is because it's in the index folder, which is inside the SRC folder. Packages just means basically where it is in the folder declaration. Um, either way works, it doesn't really matter. The important thing that matter, because uh, your Java your Java ID will be very good at telling you what you need to do to make sure you can actually just hit run. And uh, what we other what we need to do otherwise is we need to grab uh, pg100.txt. And what we're going to do is that we are going to grab it. And assuming I, I find it again, we take it, we grab it, and then we drop it not into the SRC folder, but into the top level folder. Pretty much every IDE expects that the any file it's going to be reading is here in the top level. If you don't see it in in Eclipse, so if you're using Eclipse and don't see it, just remember to refresh your bro to refresh it, which is you can do with an F5, I think, or just by right clicking and just hitting refresh or something. Um, but anyway, so let's take a look at pg100.txt for a second. Yes. So for index tree folders, you should have. You, you can have have it however you want. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just saying that it had an index, and it ought it, it had the original file has this package index declaration right here, and you're and it automatic yeah right here, and it automatically removed it for me, and I'm saying that okay, why did it automatically remove it? Because if it would keep it only if I dragged it into this index folder that I just created. Okay. So. Now, I want you to see us. Uh, so, the entire works of William Shakespeare encompass a five megabyte, five and a half megabyte file, which is that doesn't seem like a lot. I mean, it really doesn't, but it is like a hundred thousand or you know, a hundred thousand plus lines. All right. So, the question is, uh, but if you notice, I'm getting a warning here. In terms of text files and working with text files, five megabytes is a lot. A lot, a lot. In fact, the morning says 5.56 megabytes exceeds the configured limit. Code insight features were not available. In other words, it's saying that uh, 
that if this was a co uh, if this was not actually just a text file, but actually a file that I needed to uh, that that actually had a program in it, it wouldn't do, be able to do anything about it, like the uh, highlighting or auto detecting of errors because it's just too big for it. Let's go ahead and run this file, uh, the file reading example, which again, this just shows you how to do a file, uh, how to do file reading using scanner, which you should already know pretty well. You know, you, you take, you know, or rather, you know how to use scanner. To use it with a file, instead of doing system.in, you use, you just simply say new file and the file name instead of system.in. Um, that can cause an, a file not found exception, hence why we put it in a try catch block which simply says, if we can't find this file, instead, do this instead. And what we do, and then the way we read it, uh, we read this file is a bit different. What we say is, while scanner dot has next line, okay, string dot line, read the line, and then print out the line. I always like to work with next lines and never use next, because next is single characters, and sometimes it gets weird with reading new lines and stuff. And mainly because if you, if you, Mix the two, it, get, it can cause horrible things to happen, unexpected things. So I always use next line. And so to read the file, all you do is say, while there's a line to read, read the line, read the next line, and then print it out. And this will automatically advance it for us. And then scanner.close is the polite thing to do after we're done. So let's go ahead and run it. And I will print it, and it will print out the file. Run it and Okay, and there we go. And it prints out the file. Great. Or is it actually? I mean, this worked 100%. This worked, it did what I intended to do. But look at my output for a second. I, I drag up all the way in my output and the, and the file and my output is not identical to the file. My file starts with the sonnets by William Shakespeare. But my output starts it with will not so graceless be the in uh, will not so graceless be to be ingrate. Um, which that's a mouthful one, but also that's not the beginning of the file. In fact, well, let me go ahead and see will not so graceless be that's line one hundred thousand and one sixty one. That's that's pretty far down there. What's going on? And the answer is buffer, buffer sizes. The answer is, is that your text file uh, has a certain size, but this buffer also has a size. The, um, this has a maximum size of amount of characters it will hold. And once it hits the maximum of characters, what is it gonna do? it's gonna throw out the old output. So every time we, so it's gonna fill up and every time it reads a line and it's got too many lines, it's just gonna to toss the previous line. Uh, you can configure this, um, you know, let's see. Actually, we can see this in, our, in, in the old command prompt, the old version of Windows command prompt, not the new nice terminal, but the old command, oh, no, it, it booted up in the new one, which is pretty cool, but settings, let's see here. Let's see, is it in here? Command prompt. Nope. Transparency background image. No, command prompt. Advance. Ah, history size right over here. The number of lines displayed in the window you can scroll back to, 9001. In other words, it takes memory to store all your output. And so because of the way, and just simply because these are legacy programs, they have a fairly short amount of memory. So a lot of, so as you're printing out your file, you'll see that not everything you had gets printed out. That's not, that's okay. That's it working as intended. It's part of the reason I chose such a big file for this one, because I'd rather you see, get experience with this issue here now, and then instead of wondering why in the world do you have a bug later on, well, then you can refer back to this and realize it's not exactly a bug. It's more that we have to adjust our, our, our settings. 
So um, let's see, can we general console? See, it says, uh, notice over here, it might be a bit hard to read, but it says override console cycle buffer. Let's go ahead and check that. And instead, and, and that's currently at a megabyte. So let's go ahead and increase it to uh, 9999 megabytes, which is certainly not a binary value, but hey. And now let's see what happens if I run the file reading example. 999 kilobytes. So. Okay, and now if I zoom all the way up, there we go. I can see everything that I've output because I told it to hold more than a megabyte in memory. So again, if you're missing output, it's not necessarily an issue with you. It's probably an issue with this uh, with the pro with the program. But the the main thing that that I the reason I give you this file reading is to show you, okay, this is how we can. Uh, you, I can confirm that the file reading is set up correctly so I can work on my program, uh, which is the other two files. You don't have to modify this file. The other thing I show you in this file is kind of what we can do over here because to remove, to handle, get to individual words. Getting individual words isn't so bad. What you do is that you, uh, is that you use the split, of course. Um, this is a regular expression that says slash slash s plus, which simply says, this says any white space and any amount of white space. So if I see a double space, it will split the double space without any issues, as opposed to if you just had a space, it would kind of come with, out with issues. Yes? Can you have a regex in the Python course? Um, I, it was lost on me at that time because it was my first programming class I've ever taken. Mm -hmm. uh, where does this transition to an uh, academic question or whatever, but where do you find a list of all regular expressions like that's reliable? Um, Regexer is pretty good at that. Regexer. Um, different programming languages have different like um, extensions to the regular expression uh, kind of concept. The issue is that regular expressions only comes up in what's taught here as a 3000 level class and in other schools as a 4000 level class. And I mean, when I see come up, I mean like formally come up as something that needs to be taught as part of the curriculum. And that course is comp computational automata, where we talk about uh, how regular languages, which is what regular expressions express, are the same as uh, deterministic finite automata, and how those can be used, uh, can be built on to create stack machines and context-free grammars, and how those can in turn be used to build Turing complete, uh, Turing complete languages and Turing machines. So it's building up kind of the mathematical and linguistic foundations of computer science. Um, so, um, so, now over here, we have these replace all functions and those also take in regular expressions, by the way. So if so, you can either you know go through and replace the punctuation you want one by one, although the where replacing the period because that has a special meaning when you're working with regular expressions. Or you can figure out how to do a regular expression to make a custom character class and do it in all in one, which might be worth your time. Um, but regardless, that's kind of, again, a thing near the end that you should handle near the end of what you're doing. At the beginning, you should just be, you know, you should just not care about the punctuations and add them uh, directly into your program. Okay, you have two other files to complete, the node file and the index tree file. The node file is fairly short. You definitely want to get that done first. Um, the idea here, though, it just note with the constructor, constructor, I say that you should initialize the list. Note that we have a list over here that, you know, you have an instance variable, the, you know, you have an instance variable called list over here, that, and it's not initialized. The constructor needs to initialize it. If you don't initialize it, you'll get a null pointer exception. Furthermore, if you don't initialize it correctly, you don't refer to the instance variable and instead create a new variable in your constructor, that can also create a, sorry, create a different variable in your constructor and event you would overshadow it and that can cause an issue. So if you're having trouble with that, be sure to, you know, call me over. Um, the two string is, 
is that can be either very easy or you can make it a bit harder on yourself. You can do this in one line in the sense like this is a one line kind of, the, the return statement can be a one liner. Okay, once you've, all you really need though for the node is the constructor and the two strings. Um, the index tree on the other hand, um, has, it looks hard, but um, it's actually quite a bit easier than our previous programs because, oh, that's not the right one, it said index tree. There we go. You can do it. We're just gonna have to download it. I'll just download it. I'll just download it and open it up. Here we go. So it doesn't have any generics because of course the nodes are always are always the same and holding the same thing. Um, the ant, the add method, sorry, your add methods are going to be very, very similar to what you do with the, um, to what you do with in, in the, in the videos that I go over. The difference here is that rather than just adding a single E item, I have string word and int line number. I give you the lot, the word and the line number I'm, uh, that I found the word on because we care about that. Okay. The word is how you find the, the the node that you care about and the line number is what we want to add to that word if it doesn't if it exists already if it doesn't exist you create a new index node to hold that word and that line number um for but for pretty much everything else for, uh contains and delete that should work exactly the same as the way we have we did our um uh, we did it in the video a uh, print index bit trickier to do. That's actually probably the second hardest part about that, which is figuring out the best way to print it. Um, you'll want to create a recursive method in order to print it out. In other words, you know, keeping track of where you are. Um, so how do I print out this node, this subtree? Print out my left, if I'm doing an order, print out my left subtree, print out myself, print out my right subtree. Okay. And that should rely on using the two string method for the node to print out myself. All right. And with that, I will be happy to get around to helping out other to everybody unless there's any questions first. All right. I'm going to go all right. I'm going to go and move my way around the room, check in with Zoom first. Let's see, start recording.